In this video, I'm going to show you how to sketch the graph that goes with this equation. And the first thing I do is just check to see that it's written in graphing form. This equation is, but let me explain to you what graphing form is. It looks like this. And a lot of times it's called vertex form. For this video, I'm going to call it graphing form. It just is written where you have, well, let me just read this off. It says y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. It's written in a form where you have some number multiplied by the x stuff squared plus another number. And hopefully you can see that this equation is written in this form. Now, once I've figured that out, I identify the parent function. And the parent function includes the y, the equal sign, the x, and the squared. It doesn't include the negative 1 half, the minus 3, and the plus 1. It's just the most simple part of the function. So I'm going to write the equation y equals x squared off to the side here. And I'm going to make a sketch of the parent function. And hopefully you remember that y equals x squared looks like the letter u from previous videos. So I'll make my xy axis and I'll sketch the parent function. Looks something like this. This isn't perfect, but it'll work. And now I'm going to go over to this equation and, and write and see how the numbers in the equation transform or change this graph in yellow. So let's read the equation from left to right. There's a time sign here. And hopefully you remember that when you multiply, if you notice here, we're multiplying by 1 half. And there's also a negative sign. Hopefully you remember that when we multiply by a number less than 1 but greater than 0, like 1 half, it causes the graph in yellow to appear wider. It's called a vertical compression. And the negative sign causes the graph in yellow to reflect over the x-axis over here. So let's do that. We're going to make this graph appear to be wider, and we're going to reflect it over the x-axis. It's going to look something like this. Wider appear wider and reflect it. So something like this. So that's what the negative 1 half causes. Then I go over here to the x minus 3. And hopefully you remember that this piece inside the parentheses causes the graph that's now in blue to move left or right. And you should know that because the 3 or the minus 3 is attached with the x. And the x is horizontal. So this minus 3 causes the graph to move right 3 units, not left. Again, you have to think backwards with the horizontal movements. So this minus 3 does not cause the graph to move right 3 units. I'm sorry, it does not cause the graph to move left 3 units. It causes it to move right 3 units. So think backwards on this one. And then the, the number at the end, the plus 1 right here, causes the graph to move up or down. And you don't need to think backwards here. This will just cause it to move up 1 unit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my final graph in red. My final sketch, I should say, because... This is definitely not exact. So what I'm going to do now is from here, I'm going to go to the right 3 and up 1. So to the right 3, 1, 2, 3, and up 1. That's about right there, up 1. So again, I went to the right 3 and up 1. And my final graph's in red. I just moved this blue graph now, and it's going to look something like this. And again, these are not exact. There you go. So this would be my final sketched graph. Let's try another one where it's not written in graphing form. So let's clear this out here. Say I had an equation like this. y equals how about negative 2 plus 3? times x plus 1 squared. And I want to sketch this graph. 
Now, this is not written in graphing form because I need the minus 2 at the end of the equation to get it in graphing form because I want this 3 times x plus 1 squared, this piece here, written first. Now, there's a mistake that a lot of students make is they do this. They say negative 2 plus 3 is 1, and they rewrite it like this. You cannot do this. And the reason being is the order of operations. And I just want to go over that because I see that mistake a lot. But you have to do the stuff inside the parentheses first, then the exponents, then the multiplication, then the addition last. So you're not allowed to add these right away. So what you need to do is just reposition the negative 2 to the end of the equation. All you'd have to do is this. You'll write it as 3 times x plus 1 squared. So I'm writing this whole piece first. And then I'm just going to reposition the negative 2 or the minus 2 at the end of the equation. So instead of it being at the beginning of the equation, the minus 2 is now at the end of the equation. And this is graphing form. And then I can just apply transformations. Again, the parent function here is going to be the same. y equals x squared. And then let's just sketch this to see what it looks like. So let's graph the parent function. Looks something like this. And now I'm going to look over here at this equation. And let's see what the this does. What does the 3 do when you multiply by a number greater than 1? Do you remember? So when you multiply by a number greater than 1, it makes the parent function of the yellow graph appear to be skinnier. It's called a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. So what I'm going to do is make this graph skinnier, but I'm not going to reflect it. There's no negative sign, so it's going to be skinnier, something like this. And then I'm going to look here, right, at this x plus 1. That causes the graph to move left 1. This minus 2 causes the graph now in blue to move down 2. So now I'm going to take the vertex right here. I'm going to move it left 1 and down 2. So think left 1, down 2. Left 1, down 2. So I now move the blue graph, and my final graph is going to look like this. It's in red. It's, hopefully you can see that. There you go. That's my final graph in red. And remember, these are just sketches, right? They're not exact. And in a later video, I'll show you how to make more exact graphs. Have a great day.